Good morning and welcome to Free From Friday in our Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. I'm Karen Griffiths. And I'm Simon and I've got no screen. <laughs> so I can't see anybody's comments. You know what? That's the one thing I never thought of. I put my, uh, I thought, oh, I don't need the iPad. I put it to one side and poor Simon. Poor Simon. Poor Simon? Poor Simon. No, no thinking about me. There we go. Let's get him on the right page. So who have we got today, Karen? <laughs> who gets the special hello? Who gets Karen's special hello? How's that? Here we go. Where are we? Where here we are. So my first one there is Good Morning Annette Mawson. You've got my special hello, so I'll pass you over to Simon. Take out the case for you. There you go, my dear. That was me tied up. I don't need that. I'll put it to one side. <laughs> and then Simon's looking around. He's just going, what? what? What's, what's going on here? What's going on? So today we're making gluten-free carrot cupcakes. And I must admit, oh, he's talking. Question. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not an interesting question. I've turned him off once. You know, like when you can disable him. He's still listening. He's still listening. So. We've. I've made a batch this morning ready to decorate. Anyway. It'll go in a minute. I've made a batch this morning ready to decorate in a bit because, as you know, they take twenty-five minutes to bake, and. Uh, I've already got three that's disappeared. Um, Carol says they are delicious. Uh, she tried a little bit of one and then John's tried one. The girls in the office tried another little piece of that one that Carol shared. And they say it's so light and moist and it's really fluffy. So I'm really happy that this recipe has worked out and it's on the website. I have already put it on the website. So if you want to put in the website on our www. See, I've got my finger there and he's not even looking at me. W W W W W W dot sugar and crumbs mixing it up dot co dot UK put in gluten free carrot cupcake and the recipe is there for you to see. I had made the cupcakes, as I said, but we are going to top it with our delicious cream cheese, natural flavoured icing sugar. We're going to do a roll swirl. And you know what? I thought, what else can I do? I thought, you know what? Let's make a marzipan carrot for each one of them. Never made a carrot before, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> so these are so quick and easy to do. That's why I had to think about doing the, uh, the carrots. I'm also going to see whether the white piano has dried from last night. And uh, we can get it out of the case. And then I can put the I can dust the white piano pink as we want a pink piano, and then you can see that you saw me put the chocolate one together last night. So let's get the white one done as well. Don't need a mixer mixer for this until I do my cream cheese buttercream. So into a medium sized bowl. I've put the full recipe on the website, but I'm only doing half a recipe today. So I, I, the full recipe makes 12 to 14 cupcakes. And as I've already made uh, the cupcakes before, and I've, 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 made, I've, I've, made, I've made 14, but I've got like nine left. So um, I've made those. So I'm only going to make it today so I can make seven because we just don't want to be inundated with carrot cupcakes. So in the, the normal recipe would be 200 grams of... Get the recipe sheet out. The normal recipe would be 100 grams of light brown sugar and 100 grams of cinnamon swirl natural flavoured icing sugar. So I have halved it. So into this is 50 grams of light brown sugar. And I'm just going to just use my whisk just to make sure we've got no lumps in there. <laughs> I think it was fed up for me then. Do you? So, so I've got my light brown sugar in there and then I'm going to put one egg into there one egg and I've got my 100 mils of sunflower oil now remember every measurement I'm giving you today is because I've halved the recipe so I've put in 50 grams of light brown sugar one egg and I'm now putting in a hundred mils of um, rapeseed oil 
or sunflower oil or any other oil that you like that's uh, flavourless. And we're just going to whisk that all together. So it's all nice and combined. I mean, you can use a mixer if you want to, but it's such a, so runny, it's fine. I just want to try and just knock a couple of lumps out of those sugar. There we go. So that's mixed to one side. So into my larger mixing bowl now, we are going to put in 100 grams of self-raising flour, 50 grams of cinnamon swirl natural flavoured icing sugar, I'm going to put in half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm using the ground cinnamon. So you know what, it's half a teaspoon, but I'm just going over it a bit. I don't mind a, a good swirl of cinnamon there. So half a tea, a good half teaspoon of cinnamon. I want to put in half, it's, it should be three quarts. So I'm going to put in half a teaspoon it gone of bicarbonate of soda and I'm putting just under half a teaspoon of gluten-free baking powder so remember the flour I am using today I'm using Dove Farms a gluten-free self-raising flour today so we've got all that into there and I just want to put in just a little pinch of salt I'm just going to mix all those round. So they're all mixed. You can smell the cinnamon with the icing sugar there and the cinnamon. It smells beautiful, that. So into this bowl, we're going to slowly add this wet mixture, just so that it's a mix it in thoroughly with our spatula. So how's everyone feeling after our Mammoth Live last night? Did you all enjoy it? I did. <laughs> oh, Simon. You were only using two fingers. And people could see now you were only using two fingers, so they know you're not that busy. <laughs> Stop looking for sympathy. They now know that you're not it's that busy. Bit, that you just... It's more of old <laughs> So I'm just going to mix this round now until everything is incorporated really nicely. Into this, I'm going to put now a hundred grams of grated carrot. Now, a great uh, India bless her before she came in while I was tidying up and that, and she came in and she peeled my carrots and she grated them for me. So I've kept them in a nice bag there. So if you do peel your carrots early, you can pop them in your bowl and then just pop them into a Ziploc bag. It saves them going um, a bit dry and brown looking. We'll mix the carrots in. I know it looks, it looks a lot of carrot, but believe you me, it tastes absolutely beautiful in the sponge. Now, you can do this as a tray bake if you wanted to, or in a loaf tin. If You, want, you can use the same mix, and you can just uh, put it in a loaf tin or a tray bake. I just wanted to make the cupcakes, because I think it's just lovely when you've got your own little cupcake there. So, as you can see, that's all lovely and mixed in. So, the one thing... I did forget to bring was my spoon to spoon it into my bun cases. Here we go. Put those to 
down side now. So I just want to make sure that these are filled just, just under, about three quarters full or just over half because I don't want to come too far over the case but I do want them to, because uh, we're going to put the rose swirl on. love a good carrot cake because I just love the cinnamon taste as well. But yeah, well, Lynn, I forgot to introduce you today. Hi, Lynn. Hello. And what do you feel about a carrot cake? Do you like a good carrot cake, Lynn? I certainly do, and these smell delicious. So Lynn lives nearby and she just pops in on a Friday now, don't you? like my, my little popper in now, aren't you? Just, I uh, am, yes. One thing Lynn does when she gets here, she always brews up for me. Chief Brewer. That's what you are, oh, Chief Brewer. Yeah. <coughs> and she even brews up for Simon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, that mixture didn't look like it was going to go very far, but it does. So I've got at the moment, I've made seven. I'm going to get a good eight cupcakes out of this mix. I'm going to scrape the bowl. As you know, I don't like to waste anything. So what I will do now... That one looks a little bit more in that one. nice size uh, cases there. So they're going to be popped in the oven now, which is 140 degrees C, which is a fan assisted oven, 160 degrees C, conventional oven, gas mark two. You're just guessing. Yes, and no, I'm just trying to go by memory. Gas mark two, and I think it's 325 Fahrenheit, but no doubt Simon will put me right in a moment. Will I? <laughs> and these are going in the oven for 25 minutes so I put 25 minutes on I put 25 minutes on the timer and put that to one side and I'll go through the recipe with you again just let me move these pot oh, salads that. away that you've oh, lost them you've lost them what, what was it then? so it was, it was 160 conventional which is 140 fan oven Right, okay. And I thought it was gas mark two. And a half. <laughs> and 325 Fahrenheit. That's, no, that's, that's one up. It's less. Is it 300? 325 is 170. Right. So what is it about this? So it's about 310. 310? 315. Right, I will make sure I get the, uh, the Fahrenheit and the gas mark one put well, onto on the recipe for you. 140 is not on my chart. Is it not? <laughs> no. I was looking for my cloth then just to dry my board down. There we go. I always like to dry the board down so nothing sticks onto it. Right, so those cupcakes are in the oven now and they're baking merrily away. Uh, I want to make the cream cheese frosting, but uh, let's make some marzipan carrots first. So I'm going to use the new colours that me and Carol are uh, trial and testing, they were testing them out. So I've just got out an orangey yellow colour. I'm 
just think I might as well mix all they don't have to be that big the carrots do they so put that little bit back in there just gonna get that going in my hand and then we'll add the colour so let's just try this colour out which is an orangey yellow I'll do one two spots and see how we go with that smell of marzipan. <laughs> so that's a nice orangey colour. It's a nice, that, you know what, I'm going to go just to one spot. Another little spot there. Careful. I know. Might be overdoing it. No, never. Me? That's a carrot colour if ever I saw one, isn't it, eh? Lynn, what do you reckon? Yeah, yeah I think that's just about that's it. That's just, just about it. Yeah, isn't perfect. It? Just pick the little bits of marzipan off the board. <laughs> then I will wash my hands. My hands are sticky now from marzipan and from, they're also orange. So you put no fruit and no nuts in this? Today. I haven't, no. I've just. Because they, I, I was. There's plenty of recipes out there that have fruit and nuts in a carrot cake. Now, some people just like a good old carrot cake that's a carrot cake, no, no extras. Now, there's nothing to stop you, if you wanted to, putting, say, 60 grams of chopped pecans or walnuts in there, a little bit of uh, raisins if you wanted to. But I did them without, and I've got to say, they were absolutely beautiful. You had, you, you, it, it's not like a full-on carrot hitting you. It was a gorgeous cinnamon. You had the carrot in there. You could the, the brown sugar, just, it, just everything, and the cinnamon-flavored icing sugar. You had a gorgeous flavored, a cinnamon, a really tasty sponge. It was light and moist, and I just thought I don't need to add anything else to this. I would actually make these, and Terry and India are both going to make these at home without adding fruit or nuts. But the choice is yours. If you want to, you can add. And I will put that, I'll amend the recipe later and put the tip at the bottom. But if you want to add pecans or any dried fruit, then you could add about 60, 60 grams of pecans. And you could probably add about 40 grams of raisins as well if you wanted to. So look at this now. We've got our... Bit of a big carrot. <laughs> yes, this is one big one. So now I've never made a carrot. So let's have a look. I know everyone talks about doing. Everyone talks about doing the the, the pear. You know, the the, the the teardrop. Look at that. Yeah, that's quite fine. Look at that. So what I will do is I'll just get one of my cakes now. I've got to put a frosting on this yet, but I just want to make sure. Oh, look at that size there. Are you are you chopping that in down the middle, or are you leaving it? Like I'm that? gonna have a whole carrot. The whole carrot. Go for it. Go for it. So, if you wanted to, you could roll out your marzipan. And then you could um, do equal equal balls, so you know all your carrots are all the same size. But I don't think I'm doing too bad actually having a little bit of a guess here. I think Joe would be proud of me with these little pear drops, these little teardrop <laughs> pear drops I'm getting here. Because as Joe said, she starts with a ball and then she does it into a teardrop. So Ring says fruit is minging. <laughs> it's not. This is. <laughs> you like me then, though. It's like it's Terry said it before. She because I said, oh, well, I, I might put some nuts in it, and Terry said, no. She says I'm a I'm a pretty basic girl. She says 
why spoil something? She says, a carrot cupcake is carrot. She says, don't ruin it and put anything else in it. But I, I was going to do it both ways. And you know what? She was right. Because when we actually tasted them, yeah. So Maureen, Mo, you can make these without nuts and without fruit. But put the carrot in. <laughs> oh, look at me. And I'm going to get a little palette knife. And uh, we're going to do the little marks on it. And I need to put a little... Uh, what did you put on it? Green thing at the end. Oh yeah, my little green thing at the end. So, Jamie, uh, sorry, Jamie and um, Valerie, I think. Yeah. So they added pineapple to it. I'll just say no, no, no. Whatever floats your boat. If you like to add pineapple to anything, yeah, you could do. But um, I, I don't know how pineapple would taste with carrot. Because you do get a good taste of carrot. I think sultanas are better. So how have I made now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got. I'm making sure that I've got. I'm making enough carrots. One's coming out of the oven as well. Eight, eight and eight. I need sixteen. Eight, sixteen. Then. Yeah. So might, while I'm here, we might as well make sixteen, because then I can decorate the ones coming out of the oven. Right. Some of them are a bit um, mean. What, the carrots? Yeah. But you, you don't always get the same shape carrots in every bag, do you? They mean that one. You do, you buy them little baby ones. So. <laughs> oh, he's so particular, isn't he? So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, forty. Oh, I think I've got sixteen now. That was a bit mean, that one, all right. <laughs> if you're going to taste marzipan. So we've got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. This is the last one. And then we'll do the little green um little Bleach. green leaf. Little green. It's only gonna be a little bit of green on the top. There we go. So I'll put that back in there. Got a little bit of marzipan left here. We'll colour that to green. Let's just put one spot. Just put one spot in for now, only because it's only a little bit of marzipan. It's a good job I saved a bit of marzipan then, wasn't it? So what I'm trying to think is, how am I going to do a calyx now? I could do with probably a little star-shaped cutter or something like that. It's not really a kale, it's just a carrot top, isn't it? And I'm not doing the big leaves coming out, so it's just a little bit of... Feathery leaves, aren't they? Yeah, but I'm, I'm not doing... I'm, we're not going feathery leaves, Lynn. Let's have a look. Let me rinse my hands again, get my corn flour out, because the marzipan will stick. To my board. So a bit of corn flour there. Let's roll this one out. You said you've only got 15. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. Copy, cut. Well you. done. I like the way I'm, well testing, done, you. I'm testing you for, for the health. Well done, <laughs> Yeah, a few people spotted that. How? I'm s how will I do the tops of the carrots, people? Ah. We do it like that. You just want like a little triangle. I'll do the next one a bit smaller. Yeah, that'll do it. Could you try and um, work all in one place and then I can do it in a bit? 
Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll zoom in and then you can I'm here. work to it. Right, I'm working to here like that. So I've just got my three little, my three little bits like that. Just let me get my ball tool out. I have my lovely Wilton set here. Just so, in fact, I'll use my um, my Dresden tool and put it on there, and then we'll just gently. We could actually put a. I know what's even better as well, Lynn, for the next one. I'm learning as I'm going along here. When I'm going to put a hole. Them, just put them a little bit closer so they're, they're on the screen. How's that? Is that okay like that? do want to make sure that I'm not going that there's I don't want to make sure that there's not too much carrot coming off the end of the cake there. Yeah, so we've got a little carrot there. I know what I'm doing now Lynn. You'd be surprised wouldn't you? Eh? Yeah. So I'm gonna do the three little bits. So what I will do is I'll just make the eight that I've got for the cupcakes here because then I'll carry on making the other ones later. I can't just subject you all to watching me make. I'm sure people want to watch you Not everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching paint dry, isn't it? Has anybody ever watched paint dry? Yeah, we've been trying to do the second coat. Yeah, it's a long it. time. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long time. You're going to have to see now. Yeah. You're going to have to... Am I just not? You're just not. You're not. You're not. You're I'm not, not playing, playing cricket. Ball, I'm not playing you know. cricket. Right. I will do. I will do all this over here then, Simon. Is it all right if I do it here like that? My thin end of my Dresden tool. Just making a hole. I'm squeezing the end together and then just gently rolling it to a point so it will stick into the hole. And then just arranging the tops of the carrot. So just do, I'm just doing a couple of splits or like that. So just doing two splits. So I've got three bits. Twist it. Hole in the center. You stay there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last one, just for now. There we go. Last one, I just turned it round. I've got my three little bits there into a nice little point that will then just slip in to the hole. Look at them, do they look like carrots? They're good, thank you. Do they? <laughs> I'll do the rest of them later. I just wanted to get enough now, just for the uh, eight cupcakes I've got over there, so that you're not having to watch paint dry. I'll, I'll make some more, because I've got it there, so I'll make some more in a moment. I'll put these other ones to one side, my baby carrots. And let's get on with making the cream cheese frosting. Where's my butter gone? Here it is. So my butter is not too bad there, it's quite soft. I've had that out of the fridge for an hour and it's gone quite nice and soft now. As you can see, I can chop that. It's what I would say is room temperature. 
Hello, India. Hello. It's no good trying to sneak in. Why are you sneaking in? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get my... I forgot my bowl in. use it for frosting. I, shout, I shouted to you later, I just need to use it for frosting. You must have heard me say that bit. So we're going to add the softened butter into there. So I've had that out of the fridge for around about an hour and it's gone to room temperature now. You can, if you want to, take it straight out of your fridge, straight out of the fridge and you can just give it a quick, uh, a quick 10 second, 15 second blast in the microwave till you get a nice soft butter. So we're going to mix that round and then I've got my 500 gram bag of cream cheese icing sugar. I know you all went mad for this when it first came out and I must admit it does sell really well now. It's delicious. It just sort of makes, it's great on the top of the carrot cake. It just makes them. And it's, uh, you don't have to keep them in the fridge because it's not got cream cheese in it. So you can actually just keep them in, you can keep them out, you don't have to keep your carrot cake in the fridge because of the cream cheese. So mixing that up now, so this, I want to get this nice, light and fluffy. So put the best in the put them the out of the way. So while it's just mixing up, has anybody got any questions they would like to ask me? Just might as well make a few more while I'm here. to the demonstration day on the 24th of July. Are you coming, are you, Lynn? I most certainly are. So, me and, uh, it's me and Carol, on the 24th of July, we're doing the demonstration day. We thought, uh, like Carol said, we'll kick it off. Uh, we're, it'll be great. It'll be great to meet you all. And we're going to kick it off by, I'm going to do a chocolate demonstration in the morning, and then Carol's doing a demo in the afternoon. So the, uh, you can still arrive at the same time, like, you know, nine to half past, like we've been saying on the original post. But the first demo is not going to be until ar around 11 o'clock, because we know that you all like to greet each other. You'll be doing plenty of chatting, and there'll be brews that you can get yourself a brew. So the first demo will start at 11 o'clock, and then we will break for an hour's lunch. And then Carol will demo in the afternoon. Now, those tickets are on sale now at £15. So if you'd like to uh, come and meet me and Carol and join in some, have some fun. We would love to see you. And then the week after, on the 31st of July, is the demo day that has got um, Marion Frost and Karen Davis on the same day. Now at the moment uh, we haven't got those on sale because we're still waiting to see the people who are booked on to the 26th of June and the 3rd of July. We're just transferring people over to see what sort of dates they wanted to go for. If there are any spare places, Carol will put them on sale. and chop it in. Now we chop it in for anybody new who is watching, we chop the icing sugar in to prevent a massive icing sugar cloud in the kitchen. Sorry, what was that date again please? The 24th of July is, the, is, is when me and Carol are going to do a demonstration, that's our first demonstration day. The next one after that is the 31st of July, but at the moment that isn't on sale because we're still waiting to find out the people who were transferring from the two dates that were cancelled. As soon as Carol knows we've transferred everybody, if we have any remaining uh, places to buy, she'll be putting those on the website for you. But as of yet, 
we haven't got anything because we're still transferring people over. Don't forget our brilliant icing sugars are on sale. We've got an icing sugar sale because uh, we should have been at Cake International this week, but they cancelled it. So Carol, uh, Carol and John always like to put a sale on so that you can feel like you've been there. So all the icing sugars are £2 a bag. So get that while the going's good. Especially if you want to try these ones, make sure you get the cinnamon swirl and the cream cheese. One more. Actually, I've had two more because I only had 15. <laughs> As somebody pointed out, I only had 15 carrots, didn't I? I'll just scrape that down a minute. I'm just going to put that in the bag a moment. Put that over there. Break my butter down to make sure all the butter is mixing up from the bottom because it's going nice and light now this and it's going nice and creamy so I want to mix it over in the bottom to make sure there's no lumps down there that haven't mixed let's just turn that on again just for a moment while we just prepare the bag so we'll just get the bag undone I'm using a full bag in there because I've used 250 gram block of butter. Let me put my carrots out of the way. Did you make the extra carrot? I've not made it yet. I've got an extra carrot to make. So I've got two two carrot uh, two carrot tops and one carrot to make. So that is lovely, light and fluffy now. We're going to add in this cream cheese, which smells lovely. It smells. And then uh, there we go. let's chop this icing sugar in. So just going to pull that into the bowl carefully, try and prevent an icing sugar cloud. And then we're going to chop in. Now for everybody new who's watching us, this is how we chop in. Just to try and prevent the icing sugar cloud going all over your kitchen cupboards, work surfaces, pans. Oven's calling me. Beautiful. Just going to test these now. Oh, they smell. Oh, they smell that now. The oven. So these are lovely. Look at these. They are firm to touch. So they spring back when you touch them and they're hot. But when my cake tester is inserted, comes out lovely and clean. So those uh, cupcakes are cooked perfectly. I'm going to put those in a wire tray to cool down. I'm going to leave them in this tin. You leave them in the tin for at least 15 to 20 minutes. It prevents. It, it, I found it prevents peeling the cases away from the cake. So let's carry on chopping this in. That, that tin was a bit warm. We're just chopping this in here. It's nearly done now. I was rudely interrupted by the oven pinging. So that was exactly 25 minutes it took those buns to, to cook. Um, so I've got a question, but mowing I think has answered it. Yeah. Um, uh, how long in advance can you make the chocolate mould? Oh, um, as as long as you want because once you've made it store you can then store it in a cardboard box 
and it will keep, you know, it, keep it in a cool, dark place, and you can keep that chocolate for ages. It's like having a bar of chocolate, isn't it? You, uh, as long as you keep it in a cool, dark place, it won't bloom and you'll be able to use it. I mean, I've, I've made chocolate, I made uh, chocolate cars like three weeks before I've needed them and I've just kept them in a, in a shoe box that's been lined with greaseproof paper and I put the lid on it and I just have left it in a cool dark place for three weeks before I needed to use it. So I'm just gonna check this buttercream in a moment. It's all mixed in now. So I'm gonna give it a 30 second blast. to test it now just to see whether it's piping consistency it's a little bit you know what I could probably do with just one tablespoon of hot water in that so I'll have to get some water out of the kettle and then I'm gonna just put one tablespoon of water because I don't want it to be really really soft but that just seems like that's a little bit thick to come out the piping bag and it, you, I might find that it's pulling the rose swirl when I'm doing the rose swirl so I just want to make that a little bit looser So I'm just going to put in one tablespoon and I've just got some warm water out of the kettle. Turn it on slow a moment just for the water to get in there. And turn that up just a bit of good mix. And already I can tell that that's a better piping consistency in there. Now in the winter months, you might find you might need to put two tablespoons of water in, but always put one in first and then test it. As you can see, that comes off, that is nice and smooth now, and I can tell it's not dragging around the bowl, and I will be able to pipe with that okay. I'm gonna use a 1M, a Wilson 1M, um, in a piping bag and just do a rose swirl on the top and then just decorate that with a carrot. As you can see, lovely. Lovely and smooth. We'll fill the piping bag up first. Where's the nozzle gone? Simon, have you took... Oh, it's here. I'm not using... You've not touched it. I'm going to use the one M out of the Savoy set. <laughs> So you roll the bag down, as Miss Carol always says, like as a pair of stockings, you roll it to the bottom so that you can get your 1M and put the 1M in, M in very carefully. You're making sure that the points are not going to pierce through your bag because then you would just get buttercream spaghetti coming out the sides of your bag while you're trying to decorate your cakes. I'm just going to cut the bag just below where the points are, where they finish on the nozzle. So when I push it through it carefully, I've got the bag there and it's just below the points. Now I'm not going to overfill the bag because I can keep filling it up as we need it. The only time I tend to use the big bags if I'm doing the pavlovas, you know, meringues, that are, or, um, well that's it, the meringue kisses, the pavlovas and the, uh, the long meringues, because I tend not to want to mess with it too much and get it piped as quick as we can. And also, I've done that with macrons as well. If I've used the same uh, macron mix and I've not coloured it and I've just used it one colour, then I use a big that bag there so we can get them packed so we're not messing around with it too much that it takes the air out of it. You want to handle it as least as you can. So now I've got my beautiful, I can pipe that lovely. Put that out of the way till I need it again in a moment. I'll get my cupcakes now which have been cooling in the tin for 20 minutes and then they were cooled on the wire rack until they were completely cool. Here we go. Most important, we make sure these bits of plastic off the piping bag go out of the way. 
because you it, you can sometimes find you pick it up on your spatula by mistake and then you wonder why your buttercream doesn't come out of the bottom of your bag it's because there's a piece of plastic being caught in the bottom so these rose swirls start in the center and you overlap so you start with a blob and then you overlap that blob and then keep coming round and then break off so start in the center overlap it squeeze come round break off to the side I just want to fill my bag up again because it's getting right to the to the end. So I said this mixture that we've done now, I've just done half a mixture now, and I've managed to get eight cupcakes out of it. So out of the full mixture, you probably you could get between 14 and 16 cupcakes, depending on how how much you fill your cupcake case or what size of cupcake cases that you actually use. So I've squoze the air out of it because I don't want it to, um, to suddenly go pop when I'm halfway through piping a rose. As you can tell, putting that one tablespoon of water in has really made it so smooth that it's easy to pipe with. It's not dragging. Put that to one side because I'll be using that on the other ones that come out right I need to get my little set out again now couldn't get the lid off then how bad is that and I've got my little my little tool it's like a little little shovel on one side <laughs> I like that so what I'm going to do with this is because it's I love this set this Wilton set. It's got everything in there. It's got your tweezers and it's got uh, little, little tweezers in there as well. Absolutely brilliant. And then you've got all your tools in there. Your Dresden tool, um, which is that one there. And then you've got all the rest of your tools there. So with these carrots, what I want to do is, we're only going to do the top because you're only going to see the top. Let's just put some lines in. And just make it now you could dust these if you wanted to if you wanted to put a bit of brown on there but these carrots are really clean the baby carrots and they've been washed <laughs> so we don't <laughs> so I'm just marking it down like that it just it just gives that carrot effect on it and I do think the uh, the green toppers the leaves do make it So we've got our lovely cupcakes there. And you know, you know what I'm going for, don't you ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> no cupcake leaves this kitchen unless it's been sparkled. We're like a disco in here. So we're gonna sparkle these cupcakes up just to give them a bit of bling. Don't worry about the glitter going on the board. If you find that you can't get your glitter off your pink or your grey boards, do the Trex method that I've shown you how to do it. And a damp cloth will bring all the sparkle up and then that'll be a lovely clean board again. So, Lynn, could I ask you to pass me um, that, that slate underneath there, that slate one there? That. Thank you, yeah, thank you. It's great having Lynn on the other side of the kitchen over there. She can pass me things. Thank you very much. So, I'll put these onto here.
them all out of the way. The little carrots over there for in a bit. So look at them. What do you think? Do you want me to turn them round, Simon? Or do you want me to leave them this way? Leave them like that. Leave them like that. What do you think? And they are an absolute gorgeous cupcake. Um, what I will do, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to spoil these ones for photographs. <laughs> Because someone is going to say, can you cut one in half? Um, but Simon has got a couple more photographs to do, haven't you, Simon, today? Uh, the piano. Because oh, yeah. you don't want to carry that home yeah. <laughs> to the studio, did you? Piano, no, you don't want to carry it to this because he's got his studio. And he says, I can't carry that piano to the studio. Because it, it, it's, it's, it's lovely and it's set. But remember, the lid is quite flimsy, which I'm going to get them out again in a minute and show you. And we're going to try and get that white one out and we'll put the white one together. So what I will do, I'll get a sharp knife. These are ones that have come out of the oven now. One of the ones that I've just baked, because you all know what the frosting looks like. Let's unwrap that so you see it comes away from the case. Lovely. And that's how spongy they are. So there you go. That's how lovely and spongy. People who say gluten-free isn't a spongy cake. This is really spongy, light and airy. And very, very tasty. Looks good. Let me just move these out of the way. Because I want to get you... I'll put those there like that. I just want to get you the chocolate that I made last night to show you the piano. And then I'm going to get the white piano out and see... Go nice and clean there. There's my dry cloth. Here it is. Dry that. So there's the rocking horse from last night. And the yellow one, which I'm going to dust up into gold as well. I did it in yellow, but I'm going to I'm going to give it a tart up into a, a gold as well. But this is the piano. That's the chocolate piano. Then we had the makeup set, so we've got the makeup set there. And then these were the strawberries. I made some hollow strawberries, and I made some solid strawberries as well. But like we said, these are like a bit of a was it a Logan berry or somebody said well like this was a bit like a berry. So I have made them hollow, which you could fill with um somebody said like you could fill them with with cream if you wanted to a bit of flavored cream or you could fill them with a little bit of with a bit of good ash you know, like your truffle and you could put a bit of truffle in there if you wanted to uh i personally think uh i think a solid strawberry is the way to go but that's because i like chocolate so we've got all that there i've put a few strawberries in there but i want to get those out in a bit because i want to carry on so what i'm going to do now is put a bit of paper down dust these and then we'll get the white one out of the mould. Because I realised when I dusted it for the photographs, I hadn't dusted the little bit. I hadn't dusted the the uh, the, 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 the the lid holder upper. So I've got those out very carefully. That's better like that. Move that to one side and stop dripping over the dripping over my mat. There we go. Move them to there. Wayne wants a song on your piano. <laughs> you don't, Wayne, honestly. <laughs> Simon's heard me sing. He's saying, please don't, please don't. So, where, oh, I've got my dust out. What am I like? Got them out. Here we are. Here's some I made earlier. So I just want to go over This rocking horse in sparkling gold. Put a little bit in 
there. Oh yes. Have you ever made a cake using the large dress stone cake tin? The large dress? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Is that like the princess dress? No, I haven't. Right. If it's a princess dress, no, I haven't. I've only made um, I've only made uh, the, these, you know, the sphere cakes like you get the football tins. I've only made that right. one. So would you know which, well, how much mixture to use to make that? What size approximately is it? Because I will probably, if it's, um, depends on, any ladies on here who, has anybody made anything on here with um, the large, right, the, I think they call it the princess tin. Okay, so hopefully somebody else can answer that. And yeah. what red did you use for the bright red strawberries? The bright red strawberries, I used colour mill. I used the, the colour mill uh, red and it, it, like you said, it coloured them beautifully. But I was just testing our new colours out with the, uh, the, the, because our new colours, if we do get them in, will only do pastel shades. And I was trying it out last night and I, I could get to that uh, nice light loganberry colour, but I couldn't get to a bright red. So I actually used the, the colour mill bright red, the colour mill red on those bright red strawberries. So look at that rocking horse. Now it's been done in the sparkling gold. And that's over our, the yellow chocolate, because I had white chocolate, which I coloured with um, the colour that we're testing, which was a yellow. And then I just got over it and look at that. That's made it gorgeous. So we've got a lovely pink one. And we've got that one. And then let's just go over. I used a bright gold on the piano. I just want to go over, just go over the piano just so I can get this stick as well. Let's give it another dusting because it's been in the fridge overnight. So here we go. So, um, yeah, don't forget to do the holding of the stick thing. That's what I'm doing now. That's the technical name for that piece. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Have I got the right name for it, though? The lid you, you knew what that I was knew what it was, the lid holding up it. <laughs> Are you taking the mickey out of me? Uh, no, somebody else was doing it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was... Um, I don't mind anybody else doing that. Do just, nope. There we go, look at that. I think it was Debbie Hargreaves, I'm not sure. Well, Debbie knows I only know things by holding up his stickies. I can't even play chopsticks on the piano. Like most people, you get on the piano and play chopsticks. I couldn't even do that right. Can you use colour splash in white chocolate? Yes, you can. Can you? You mean to colour to, to colour the chocolate? Oh no, to colour chocolate it has to be an oil based. If you meant yeah. to colour, but I thought you meant to dust. To colour chocolate, it must be colour mill or at the moment the sugar flare, cocoa butter paint. It has to be an oil based colour, otherwise you'll seize your chocolate. So it must be oil based colour to go in your chocolate. There we go. Look at that. A piano Elton John would be proud of. So put, very good. put him to one side now, just put these on here like that and move them very carefully back over there so they don't break. And I've got another piece of kitchen towel down and let's see if we can get this white piano. See, the bottom came out fine. You saw me take that last night. I took the bottom out and I took the, um, the, the lid out absolutely fine. But you do have to leave the, um, the top bit has to be left overnight. <sighs> come out. You know you want to. No, come out. Ooh. 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 Oh. 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 There you go. I did hear it crack. You know, like crackers, though, it had come away from the side. 
So it's, oh, so yes, leave it in overnight. So then we have, so I'm still gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the legs nice and white because you know, you don't have, the, the legs are always, I've, I've left my, my legs nice and dark underneath because kind of legs are nice and dark and then it's the top that's always decorated. So we are going to. So you're leaving your legs white? I'm leaving my legs white. And I'm going to colour the rest in pink. We want to try our gorgeous shimmer pink on it to see what we can get. So what I'm going to do this time is, I'm going to colour it before I put it together. <laughs> I was too excited, Why? because I was too excited last night and put it together and realised I couldn't get my brush inside. Oh, you don't need to do the inside. Piano's on. Cold on the inside. Yeah, I know, but you know. You know, but you know. Some of our gorgeous Full of strings and things. <laughs> oh, see, I can just give it a light one on the inside there, it's because I could see all little bits of gold had gone in. So I just want to make it nice. Leave me alone, Sam. I'm playing. You know I like to play. Just not a bit of chocolate there, but never mind. We can fix that with a strawberry. Remember, if you break a bit of chocolate, do not matter because you're going to fill this with chocolates or with your chocolate strawberries. I did have a little bit of white chocolate melting in the microwave because I need to put that into a piping bag just so I can pipe around the edge of the legs. Keys. Now some of you might like to start colouring these keys in blacks and whites and how a proper piano looks but no. Oh. So what I'm going to do now is just get my white chocolate again. Let's get my white chocolate, where is it? Very little bit that I need just to put in the white packing bag that I've got out already. Thank you. So I've got my. And I don't know if this will work, but we'll. Because with hand, handling it, it might take some of the. Uh, I might have to re dust that when I've handled it. That's why I'm not going to do the lid until the lid's on. pink strawberries in there have one and put a couple of red ones in there so you see that it's filling up nice and that will help hold the lid up as well so we'll just do that like that Again. So it is only a bit, I mean, you'd be surprised when you see it, I have only melted the last little bit that I had left.
with it already being tempered, I don't need to temper it. I'm just making sure that I'm getting it off the side and that it's nice and melted. And what I will do, I'm not actually going to, I'm going to use a brush. I'm actually going to brush around. So this is just to make sure, I'm just brushing the base just to make sure that I'm sticking the edge of the piano. So that's got it on all right there. Then what we need to do is put some chocolate there just to hold to keep the upper sticky. That's it's going to be. I think it's probably better that. Can I just dip it in? I can. Just thinking like this. Then brush some chocolate along this edge here. Did not dust it at the top. I don't want no, I'm gonna do that when I've done it. setting already because it's been in the fridge this it's the chocolate setting already so I just need to get my little my little tool I'm just gonna shave that chocolate away there that white chocolate so I'm being you're a sculpture as well when you do these believe how fast that chocolate set. Is that the um, ready tempered stuff? Yes. It does set quick, doesn't it? Yes. Better. So I've got that on like that. I won't be in a minute. I know I'm just going to get that like that. So then I'm just going to hold that just for sliding off the bottom as well. <laughs> it's because I am trying to rush that right. So I've got that up. That's set on there. That's there. So that's actually set on the side already. I just want to get me get me bottom bit right. I mean, usually I would let this set now um, and then dust it, but I'm just going to give it a quick dust while we're here. Oh. Yeah, you have to leave it. I have to leave it. I'm just going to give it a dust and I'm going to balance it on again, just so you can see the finished effect. Then I will actually um, get it all chocolate on. It's just it's patience. You have to leave it set before you dust it. But I want you to see the finished, the finished effect. So.
I'll just give it uh, once it's set later when I've got when I've got it all um, chocolated and set again. I'll just give it a final a final dust. But for now. There is our pink piano and our gold piano. Very nice. What do you think of those? So pull that down. So as you said, you can fill the piano, you can fill them with um, with chocolates, you can make your make your own truffles and fill them with chocolates, you can make your chocolate strawberries if you want to, you can fill them with anything, you could uh, just put a little, little gift underneath the lid so it just fills it up nice, you could make, you could even put, you could do some lovely uh, sugar rose if you wanted to and make some sugar roses coming out of there, that would look nice as well if you wanted to do it like all flowers coming out of the piano. So these are our new moulds, it's the rocking horse mould. And it's the piano mould, and as you saw, we've got the straw, the new strawberry mould, and we've also got the makeup set. And on top of all that, we've got some beautiful gluten-free carrot cupcakes. Have you any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to amend, I'll amend the times, um, it's only the time I've got to put on the, uh, on the recipe, and I'll also add the amount if you want to put nuts and raisins into, but I personally, I, I don't think it needs it in this, but if you like nuts and raisins, then please, please feel free to add anything you want, you can add anything you want, if you want to put the pineapple in like someone suggested, you can try anything, you can try it if you like it, you're onto a winner. So don't forget we have me again on Monday morning at half eleven on the baking uh, baking live at half past eleven, and then it's Carol and I again at night. I'll be on comments. Uh, so I'm on comments, and Carol is baking something, but we don't know what we're doing yet. But we will know on Monday. Right. And we have Tracy Man on Tuesday, and Rachel Hannah is coming in next week as well. And I forgot what date it was, Simon. We have the banner. The banner's going up. To, always remember, look on the Sugar and Crumbs of Disney Nozzles and on the community page, and the banner goes up there on a Friday afternoon to let you know what's coming on the following week. So then you can make a note in your diary and you can see what's coming on the following week. So you can all be there and joining us. So don't forget, the, the icing sugars are on sale for £2. I don't know how long the sale is going on for. I know it's this weekend, but I don't know if it's been extended. So if you do want to take up on the offer of the £2 a bag, then get your order in this weekend. Um, other than that, we've got a new demonstration date on the 24th of July, which is Carol and I. And we're, we're going to kick off the demo days by the two of us doing the demo day on that 24th. And then, as I said, about the 31st of July, we don't know if there's any more tickets going on sale until everybody has confirmed where they wanted to move from the 26th of July and the, the 26th of June and the 3rd of July. If you haven't already tried to change your date, if you still got a demo ticket for the 26th of July and the 20th the 26th of June and the 3rd of July. You need to get in touch via the demonstration day on Facebook because we have cancelled both of those demo days. There is no demo day tomorrow and there is no demo day next week due to Boris saying we couldn't meet. Our next demo date is the 24th of July and then we've got the 31st of July and we also have one on the 4th of September and the 11th of September. And we've also got one in October, but they're not on sale yet. The October and November one is not on sale yet. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lynn, for popping in. Lovely to see you as usual. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Simon. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everybody else, for popping in and joining me. And I do hope that you like these moulds. And I know if they are selling out and you are, because I know the grand piano was going last night, as was the rocking horse and the strawberry mould had sold out, Carol has already ordered some more for you to come in. So thank you. Okay. Bye.